How's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so first thing to note, the colour of purple behind me has changed. Yes, that does mean I'm so much closer to having the flat fully decorated. Um, just a kitchen now left to paint. I did a undercoat in there this morning. It needs to be the undercoat done because it's plaster walls. <laughs> so the, the you need to have like an initial layer so that when you put the paint on, you theoretically then only need one coat. <laughs> she says, um, that was like really, really thin on the paint this morning. Uh, so like even watered down. Um, got to a point where it's quite watery although it looks a lot better now than when I initially put it on so hopefully it should be enough if not that it was a new plaster wall that had the thinner paint on it so plan tomorrow is to start there and then do the fiddly bits afterwards and then if I need to uh, touch up the, the new plaster wall um, but yes it's very exciting I mean as, as I've mentioned before it is purple but it is in it, it, they make such a difference to this room, it really does. This room just feels so much bigger, so much bigger now that it's in a lighter colour and then now it, you know, maybe shouldn't make quite as much difference, but it, it really does. It really does. As you can see, my hair now no longer gets lost in the colour of the background because my hair is actually also kind of purple at the moment, although I think that's mostly for this faded to not quite such a purpley colour but yeah my hair is no longer getting lost in the background <laughs> now contrasts quite nicely with the colour of the walls rather than blending into the colour of the walls um but just to let you know I'm because I've been doing the painting this morning and there have been lots of paint fumes around here Recently, uh, it's been playing my dizziness quite a lot, so I'm not feeling brilliantly well today. So both this vlog and the vlog after, I'm just going to remain in this. I'm doing them back to back like I usually do, um, and I'm kind of, uh, because I'm doing so much painting and decorating, uh, I'm kind of doing this like right before this one is supposed to go up tomorrow. Um, that's because I, I've not had the time to do it uh, because of how my shifts have been scheduled and as I said, trying to finish off getting the flat decorated so that I can get my carpet and then finally get my stuff out and actually live here <laughs> instead of just exist here. Um, but anyway, deviation over with. Um, today's topic is vague versus precise, and this is a rightly one again. Um, so Sort of in the last one kind of gave a big hint as to sort of what this one was kind of towards and I said this is going to be a little bit like a part two uh, or a following, you know, a little bit more looking at what I was talking about last time where, you know, if you make a decision to do something that you then need to sort of think about the consequences and sometimes that means actually thinking in quite a lot of detail about the consequences um, and this is sort of I guess because there are two ways you can kind of write about things. You can do all of that stuff in a kind of a vague, not necessarily 100% this is how it's being done sort of way. And I quite often write things like that. Um, there are certainly a lot of things in the tales where it's implied rather than spelled out what's going on. Um, and I think that's quite a good way of, of writing things. I don't think you need to be very precise about everything that you're writing when you're when you're writing um certainly in terms of writing fantasy sometimes holding back a few details allows for your readers to sort of imagine things and come up with their own theories and their own you know oh yeah this must be done in this particular way or this could be done in this particular way or you know wouldn't it be interesting if this is how it works and then that's sort of like stems their own ideas and you know sets their own imagination into motion and stuff like that which excites me I like I like the idea of being a bit of muse, and I think when you write a little bit more vaguely, it it allows for the opportunity for that, and it allows for the, the possibility of people to apply their own kind of logic to things. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes you do need to be a bit more precise. 
Um, and sometimes you do need to be a bit more, no, actually, this is how it would work. Um, and the reason behind this, it, this being how it would work is because this is specifically how the world works, or this is specifically the mindset of this particular character, and you're, you're trying to capture multiple things, and that, that's kind of the thing. Um, when you're deciding whether you're writing something in a vague way or a precise way, or at least it is for me, is what do I gain from being precise about this? What do I gain from you know, filling in all the blanks here? Um, and if you're not gaining very much from filling in all the blanks, then I tend to keep things a bit more vague um, and a little bit more open to interpretation. But if it's something that's kind of like, well, actually, by filling in this, this blank, you're explaining something about the world or you're explaining something about this character, then I'm like, OK, I'm going to go a bit more precise. I'm going to go into a bit more detail. I'm going to sort of leave it a little less open to interpretation because actually by doing so, I'm telling a better story. Um, and that's one of the things I've definitely found with writing the third book in my narration collection is sometimes things that I usually would have been a bit more vague about I've been a bit more detailed about and I've been a bit more detailed about specifically because it tells you so much more about the character by being a bit more specific about it. Um, and it's that, that first person sort of vantage point, I guess, um, that kind of really made a difference with that one. I think whenever I've written in, in third person, whether it's been close third person or multiple third person, I've, I've had a tendency to keep things a little bit more vague, a little bit more open to interpretation. Um, because, you know, you've got lots of different vantage points and lots of different sort of, you know, it could work like this, it could work like that. I don't need to be specific because I'm not following this character through every single second of their day. Um, I'm not doing that in the first person point of view either. But when you're doing it from a first person point of view, when you can't just sort of like hint around certain things, being a little bit more precise sometimes gives you more characterization um for for your for your narrator um than you might otherwise have and that is definitely one of those things that i found in writing the the narrating series as a whole is sometimes i needed to be a little bit more detailed i mean there have been plenty of things that i've kept a bit more vague um so in the second book uh or the the second the next book to be released um there are a lot of things that, in, in terms of the main character's health, that I've not been very specific about um, and that I've kind of given a sort of vagueness around. And some of that actually comes from the time period that these characters are in, um, the, the time period, the, uh, um, in terms of, you know, where the mental cool technology would be. So I've done a little bit of research, but there's only like, it's really hard to research certain things and I couldn't really like get necessarily the details that I wanted to get um, so I could be 100% certain. So keeping things a little bit more vague and left a little bit more open to interpretation works in that kind of sense. But it also kind of works because I don't think the character or the, the people or the medical professionals dealing with, um, with the main character necessarily know 100% what is wrong with him. I think they've got ideas of what bits of him don't work. Um, we certainly know which bits of him are problematic, but I don't think they ever really 100% for certain know what is wrong with him. And, and some of that is, you know, uh, the medical knowledge at the time. Some of that is, it's a, it's a lot of different things that are going on with him and it's not necessarily, you know, that he is suffering from one specific thing, but because he's got all of these things, it's kind of throwing off any one specific diagnosis um, and various things like that, because, yeah, it, that, that does happen. I mean, that still, to a certain extent, does happen. There are still a lot of things that people get diagnosed with kind of by default because there is nothing else that kind of matches what they have and it's that's this is this is the closest thing we think it is uh, so it must be that and I, I am speaking as somebody with one of those types of diagnoses uh, fibromyalgia or as some medical professionals are now calling it um oh what are they now calling it I'm, I'm sorry my brain is doing a fog <laughs> um Functional illness, there we go. 
Uh, so fibromyalgia, or as some medical professionals are now calling it, functional illness, falls into this this kind of weird camp where you've got lots of very differing symptoms, and you know no two patients are ever going to be exactly the same because a lot of the time what they are experiencing and what they're suffering from is almost nothing like another sufferers. Um, I mean, a lot of times they're very similar or very close, or there's some correlation between them. But you can get ones which is sort of like, yeah, I've literally only been diagnosed with this because I've no idea what's wrong with me. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's a cop-out diagnosis by any means. I, I you know, speaking as somebody who, who does have the fibromyalgia, I prefer the fibromyalgia diagnosis to the functional illness one. The functional illness one annoys me because I feel like that's them kind of just going, okay, when we're, we're not going to bother investigating you for anything. Um, we're not going to address your concerns about anything. We're not going to take anything that you say seriously. Uh, that's very much how I feel with the, with the functional illness diagnosis. To be honest, I prefer the five mile one where there's you know at least at least on the state side of things where it's actually being recognised a bit more properly and researched a bit more properly. Whereas over here, it just, just frustrating. But yeah. <laughs> so and, and you know, speaking as somebody who does suffer from medical conditions that aren't very well understood or very well you know, documented. They're, they're better documented now, um, but aren't very well understood. There, there is a lot of kind of shoulder shrugging from medical professionals about it, and, and a lot of you know this, that, and the other. Having the main character in the the colours I see, um, basically never kind of giving a firm. Well, this is what I have, and this is what I have, and this is what I have. To, to anything and keeping all that that sort of medical stuff kind of a little bit more vague and a little bit more open to interpretation works both in terms of allowing readers to kind of put their own ideas into what it is and because I, I honestly don't think he does 100% know what's wrong with him I mean he doesn't really 100% understand why <laughs> what's wrong with him is wrong with him I mean um, he, he knows it has something to do with the fact that he was born prematurely and, and you know, there, there are certain ideas and certain reasons behind why uh, you know his health has ended up the way that it is but he doesn't know any specifics because in a lot of ways the, the medical professionals don't 100% understand you know why his circumstances have ended up the way they have so the idea of writing it from a little bit more of a vague standpoint makes sense in terms of his characterization and, and um, his story because he doesn't fully understand why his his what his life is the way it is and why you know his body works the way that it does so you know in in that sense yes it's writing a first person narrative and yes you could be a lot more precise because it's coming from a first person perspective but because he doesn't fully 100 understand what's wrong with him he can't be more precise he has to be a bit more vague about how he thinks about it. He can get frustrated. He can, you know, tell you all the specific things that he can't do because his body is the way that it is. But he doesn't understand, you know, necessarily why it is the way it is. And he hasn't necessarily received any firm diagnosis for most of the stuff that is wrong with him. So he tends to think about his health in that kind of more vague and general sort of terms. Um, in terms of the symptoms rather than in terms of the, you know, the, this is what it is. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for, for him and, and for his character, whereas when you move into um, the following book, the third book, having a bit more, you know, precision about, you know, why the character has ended up in this point, you know, all the things that he's been through, I've not necessarily gone back and, you know, I think you, you get a sense of every single thing that he's been through by the time you reach the end of the book. And I have now finished it and I'm now writing the fourth one. <laughs> um, and I, I've literally just started writing the fourth one yesterday. So it's like, yeah, very, very recent development. Um, but yeah, you, you, you kind of reach the end of the book and you kind of understand all the things that he's kind of been through, even though a lot of those things are actually documented in the second, in the first and second book, um, rather than specifically in, in you know, the things that have happened in the first book. A lot of what is wrong with him 
um, is psychological stuff, which is his baggage carried over from 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 those books, and you you kind of get that sort of unveiled as things go along, and you get like most of the details of the things that he's he's been through, that he's experienced, and why he is at the point in time that he's at. Um, and a lot of that is done through sort of this like vagueness and like slight um, alluding to all the stuff that he's been through rather than being specific. But then, then you bring in these very specific details um, around around that and you make it sort of very clear that, you know, this this is something that has you know, progressed and has taken a while to sort of bring him to this point. Um, and yeah. <laughs> So in, in his case, being a bit more specific about, you know, how certain things have affected him and, you know, what kind of why and, and stuff like that makes more sense because from his character's point of view, these are big, momentous things that have, has happened that he's gone through that affect his life, that affect the way he views the world and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, when, when you're trying to decide whether to be vague or precise, you've got to take in, into consideration your viewpoint, you've got to take into consideration what you benefit from it, and what it says about the character or characters that you're dealing with when they're more general or more vague about something, or when they're more precise about something, you know, what is the impact it's having on them, and, and, and stuff like that, and I've probably been slightly unfocused and a little bit all over the place and mostly focused on inspiration again because I love those books. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to be at the beginning of the fourth one. Um, who's, who's proving to be interesting so far. Um, very interesting so far. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm hoping you're getting sort of the gist of what I'm saying, which is when you're deciding you know, making that sort of decision as a writer, whether you want to be really vague about something or really precise about something, and you should know why you're making that decision and you should follow through with that decision um, as, you know, as long as it remains the most beneficial way of, you know, going through it. I mean, sometimes you can be really vague about something to begin with and then suddenly go really precise about it. Because <laughs> why not? Um, so, yeah, I think I've babbled on for about as much as my concentration is going to allow me right now um, on this particular subject. Um, so the next one is going to be a bit like the one I did a few weeks ago on Any Animals. It's entitled Where in the World. Um, it's probably going to be a fairly short one because I am feeling quite uh, <laughs> I'm feeling quite a bit sick at this point and I would very much like to lie down for a little while uh, but yeah I'm trying to get all of this done um, <laughs> I've got too much to do I've got far too much to do but it needs to be done um, so yeah I hope you guys this whole time has been interesting I hope you're sort of looking forward to the next one even though it's probably going to be a really short one um, but I will see you guys yeah. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!